Growing up with a father who was an educator, it was ingrained in me and my siblings that A's were definitely the goal in school. I have no doubt that my father had the best of intentions for us, but for me, A's equaled perfection, and that became my obsession, not only in school, but also in life. Perfection is an exhausting place to be. I know, I have been there many times, trying to be the perfect wife, mother, friend, employee, fill in the blank. In my mind, if I worked hard to keep everything under control and moving in the direction I felt it should go, everything had to turn out right. And if it didn't, then it must be because I did not try hard enough, was not a good enough person, or did not handle the things the way I should have. My perfectionism came to a head during a very hard time in my life. I found myself in a place where suddenly I was not seen, heard, or valued, where my voice was silenced and my skills ignored. I had no idea how I got there, and nothing I did seemed to make a difference in changing things. I became depressed and hopeless, and I wondered if I would ever feel like a skilled professional again. I felt like a woman in the middle of nowhere, not wanting to go backward and not really knowing how to move forward because every time I tried, some obstacle kept getting in the way. I yelled, I cried, and I succumbed to my go-to unhealthy thoughts of perfectionism that told me that if I just tried harder and worked to control the outcomes more, maybe then my worth would be seen. I hustled for the approval of others, only to end up feeling even more invisible and devalued. Then one day, during the two years that I had been struggling, I picked up a book by Brene Brown called Daring Greatly. She starts her book with a quote from Theodore Roosevelt that begins, It is not the critic who counts. The quote continues and basically states that it is not whether we achieve victory or get defeated in life, but more importantly that we simply stay in the arena and try, no matter how much we screw up during the fight. Brene then goes on to explain, perfect and bulletproof are seductive, but they don't exist in the human experience. We must walk into the arena, whatever it may be, a new relationship, an important meeting, our creative process, or a difficult family conversation with courage and willingness to engage. We must dare to show up and let ourselves be seen. This is vulnerability. It was as if Brene was writing specifically to me. I had let the critics define me, and in my attempts to try and please them, due to my perfectionistic ways, I was losing my true identity. I knew that vulnerability was something I valued and admired in others, and was a natural part of my makeup, but my need to be perfect and appear as if I always had it all together had kept me from embracing it in myself, especially in an environment where I was trying so desperately to be seen as credible and valued on someone else's terms. It was a situation I had never been in before, and it had rocked my world and driven me even deeper into the perfectionistic mindset of, if I could just get it right, then this will work out. After finishing Brene's book, I decided I was done trying to prove myself to anyone. Instead, I started tuning in to the positive, inspirational voices of friends and family and turned to my faith in God to remind me that I was fine exactly the way I was and how he wanted me and that perfection is an unattainable goal that no human can ever achieve. I began to embrace the imperfect woman I was and to focus on little ways each day to find happiness in what I could and not get caught up in controlling the details I could not. Slowly, I started to feel even more empowered and spent less time trying to please others and more time on fighting to find a place where my experiences and talents could be utilized and appreciated. Eventually, an opportunity for a job change came, and I ended up in a far better place than I could ever have imagined. A place where my voice was heard, my opinion solicited, and my work appreciated. The better job was amazing, but even more importantly, I ended up in a better place as a person. I had become a woman who could allow for imperfection and accept who she truly was. An emotional, caring, compassionate person with her heart wide open, a woman who knew she could mess up and sometimes be a mess and still have the love of friends and family who were there for her no matter what. And a woman who realized that she is enough just the way she is. Letting go of the effort to be perfect has made things so much easier. The pressure I used to put myself under to have it all together all the time is gone and allows me to enjoy life no matter what it brings. 
I do still struggle and at times, on tough days, find myself on the edge of perfectionistic thoughts once again. But I just keep trying to engage, stay in the arena, take each day as it comes, and rest in my faith and beliefs. Hi, my name is Vicki. I am imperfect and I am enough. It took me 46 years to get here, but I am so glad that I have arrived.